Okay, boys, we got regular season basketball to talk about. It feels good. I mean, we never really went anywhere, but it feels like we're back. And no, I'm not going to do this every day of the regular season, but I think it makes sense for opening night. Let's start with the Nuggets and the Lakers, then we can go on to Suns Warriors. And uh, look, I mean, I just, me and everybody else who's a fan of basketball just saw a whole playoff run of Jokic being impossible to guard. And what do you know? He keeps on keeping on. I mean, the Nuggets, they, they had like three or four straight plays in the fourth quarter against the Lakers where it was like Jokic around free throw line, elbow, wing, just that general area. And it's either a DHO with like KCP and he's going into like a, a long two-pointer that he makes, you know, versus AD dropping. Or it's like Aaron Gordon in the dunker spot. And then I think it was Murray coming around like the DHO with Jokic. And then it's just Murray draws attention, Aaron Gordon right there. Like the Nuggets are so good that it's simple to just to describe their offense, right? I mean, another time I think... They kind of like brought two to Murray, which put Jokic in the middle of the floor. Then it's MPJ wide open in the corner. It's just any type of coverage that you can think of against them, they've got a counter for it. And then also, I mean, if AD can't guard Jokic one-on-one, -on -one, who can, man? Although for what it's worth, there was a mini stretch in this game where the Lakers would collapse on Jokic and their timing was pretty good to where they actually did get some misses around the rim against him. It didn't last for super long, but it did happen a bit. I mean, he did have to make like three threes in this game, which, I mean, when Jokic is making threes, it's just like, what the hell, man? <laughs> From the defense's perspective. But speaking of that, you know, last season, one noticeable thing with Jokic's shot chart was that he took less jump shots, right? And, you know, there was a play here that he got the ball with like four seconds left in the shot clock. I think it was like first quarter. Austin Reeves is closing out on him. He could take the three and like nobody would really get that mad. Instead, he like pump fakes, goes behind the back and then kind of muscles Austin Reeves into the paint. Then he hits a floater over him. Like the dude's just crazy. Let's talk about the Lakers for a bit. So my big questions with the Lakers coming into this this game and I guess this season are like, you know, how realistic is it to expect like LeBron AD pick and roll, LeBron mismatch hunting, like given his age and all that, right? We did see a little bit of LeBron AD, like empty corner DHO stuff, one of which was run early and then it became like a Torian Prince open three that he made, which I mean, Torian Prince, very encouraging debut with the threes he was making and Jamal Murray chasing him. Okay, enough around screens, even if the Nuggets offense still did what it did. Uh, but as far as like LeBron AD two-man game, not a whole lot, which it's understandable, man. You know, I get it. I mean, LeBron, obviously, he can still pull off crazy athletic plays like the transition stuff he did in this one. You you could still see him like in the post on Aaron Gordon a couple times. Uh, he did have like a little stretch in the third or maybe the fourth where he was screening for like a D-low on the ball, one of which led to a D-low three because LeBron's a genius and he's like, oh, you're sagging off of him a little bit. Let me throw it back to him. One time where LeBron on the roll got a dunk with D-low finding him uh, off of a screen and then another time where they ran it and then D'Lo took a decently contested three and LeBron had a moment of like, ugh. But yeah, that's just going to be the story of LeBron all season, man. I mean, he still managed, what, 21-5-5 five and five or whatever it was. Like, it's kind of insane how he can clearly manage his stamina and all that throughout the game and still walk away with a really good point total or an everything total, really. He had eight rebounds, by the way, my bad. Defensively, the Nuggets, I think it was like the first play of the game, the Lakers ran an action for an AD screen and then it was like Jokic higher up on the screen, like level of the screen, basically. AD gets a dunk, and then it felt like they kind of switched to more of a drop defense for a while, and I do think that, like, especially Austin Reeves and D'Lo, uh, they missed a lot of shots in this game. It didn't feel like they were able to capitalize on those moments enough, uh, but there were still stretches where they would have Jokic a little higher up and then aggressively helping a little more aggressively out of, like, the corners and stuff. I mean, I would have to do a second watch to get, like, a stone-cold look at it, but the basic takeaway I had was, like, yep, Nuggets defense looked good in the playoffs, still looks good today. And some of that being, of course, because, you know, you got like Murray and KCP and Christian Brown and, you know, if Aaron Gordon ends up in like a screen action, like getting around those screens, you know, for the Jokic drop and all that stuff. And that was kind of the, the difference. I mean, obviously AD could have scored more points and some of that was like him missing pick and pops versus like a Jokic drop, even if AD did make like one top of the key three. There were also a few plays there where it was basically just, hey, AD, can you make this shot over Jokic? And sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no. That's all I got. <laughs> So for what all that means, but I mean, look, I spent a decent amount of the offseason being like, you know, what does it look like next season? You know, we, at the beginning, we get more Austin Reeves pick and roll, more Austin Reeves, like having LeBron screen for him. I don't even know if LeBron screened for Reeves that much in this game. Uh, as far as like Christian Wood. So we did have like two possessions where I thought Christian Wood kind of showed what he can do for these guys. One of which he was like spacing out for LeBron. LeBron throws it to him, catch and drive, and he gets like, I think he just got fouled. He might have even missed the free throw or whatever, but it was like, you know, that's encouraging. Another time he gets Christian Brown on the switch, and then it's like, back him down, spin move, score. Like, okay, that, that's what Christian Wood can provide for you. So that's cool. Now we go over to Suns Warriors. Uh, I think we saw like many different versions of the Suns offense in this game where 
early on, I thought they were getting into enough of their sort of creative actions that are not just simple, like pick and rolls or isos up top with their main guys. I mean, Beal did not play in this game, and that matters, of course. But, you know, an example being, and of course, Draymond did not play. That matters the other side. But an example being, like, Book will, like, go baseline off ball. KD screens for him, and then he's flowing into, like, a Nurkic DHO, and then he's going into a pull-up, right? Or even late there on that Eric Gordon 3 that was like one of the daggers. That was like Gordon and Nurkic kind of screening. If not at the exact same time, then like one screen followed by another. That sounds like the exact same thing. Um, But that leads to like Eric Gordon flowing into a relatively open wing 3 with Booker getting the assist, right? But then I also felt like there were a lot of shots, and a lot of these in the third quarter, where it was like nothing's really happening and Book or KD or a little bit of Eric Gordon are just going to kind of shoot a pull up at some point. And I mean, kudos to the Warriors because between Clay, Kaminga, Wiggins, GP2 at times when he was like able to like really get under KD, Chris Paul a little bit as well, like they got KD to miss a lot of shots, which obviously is KD. He could take all those same shots next game and he's going to make all of them. And a similar thing with like, like the Suns offense could be basic as hell and they might just make enough shots to where it doesn't matter. But in the third quarter, there was like one specific time where I think it was like Booker trying to ISO on Kaminga and he's just taking like a 12 footer right in his face. It doesn't go in. And I'm like, well, I know he can make that shot. And he probably made that shot another point in the game, but it's like how far into this side of it is this offense going to go at times. Um, But then like late there, it was like Nurkic screens for book, you know, just high pick and roll, nothing too creative. But then he sets a second screen to put Looney. And um, I think it was GP two in the action a second time. And then Booker like draws him and then jump past Nurkic inside for like a finish, which basically sealed the game. So there's just many different forms of the Suns offense where it's like extra things happening. And then there's like just very basic, like street ball esque stuff, which can still work because they're very talented. And I don't know what I'm saying. I tell you what, a Kogi based on a uh, game one already making a bid for role player all star, man. The cuts that he had off of like Nurkic screening for KD and book, they were huge. And then the offensive rebounds. I mean, that's what you say when, when, when it's a guy who teams are definitely going to dare to make jumpers. It's okay. Can you cut? Can you, you know, attack the glass, all that stuff. Um, I do have one thing to say about the shot charts for the Warriors and the Suns, and then we can talk about the Warriors a little bit. Uh, In this game, the Suns attempted seven shots in the restricted area, and the Warriors attempted 10. Uh, Now, this matters too, of course. Like, the Warriors had 28 free throws, the Suns had 17. The point I'm getting at is, this is probably just going to be baked into both of these teams, and of course, Beal being able to, like, catch and drive matters here, but, like, I get it. You know, you're very talented, great jump-shooting teams, but also, how often are you getting to the rim? Now, as I say that, we can flip over to the Warriors. Like, there were a couple times where they would run their classic pin-down stuff with, like, Clay, and then it's like, oh, two guys went to Clay. now Wiggins is wide open at the rim. That's an assist for Chris Paul. Similar thing for Looney happened in the game, too. You know, one of the times when Clay would get it on the move and then get two or three dribbles in instead of, like, a pull-up or whatever. So, okay, fine. Anyway, to talk about Chris Paul for a bit, good amount of pick-and-roll in this game, man. Even, like, in the fourth quarter, they were letting him run just, like, basic screen actions with Kevon Looney. I mean, not, not super basic all the time, don't get me wrong. You know, I mean, they had him in, like, the, the split action, you know, the classic Warrior split action. They had him as the post guy, and he was making the pass to Steph a couple times where it's, like, a simple screen action that flows into him, like, giving it to Clay for an assist or whatever. I thought Dario Saric spacing the floor for Chris Paul, whether it's for, like, pick and rolls or just general, like, spacing is good <laughs> moments. I think the big takeaway is, like, yeah, they're going to allow Chris to be Chris, which is cool. Now, when Draymond is playing... Okay, it might get a little awkward if we start doing that. Well, we really want to get Chris in the game, but we also really like our starting five, assuming that Chris will eventually be coming off the bench when, you know, all the guys are playing. And that's specifically for the fourth quarters. And it's like, yes, Draymond can still play center. He can still switch across every position. I mean, yeah, he's not like the 27-year-old version of himself anymore defensively, but Draymond's still a hell of a defensive player. It's more just like, do you want to put that on him at this age, you know? I mean, 33 is not super old in NBA terms, uh, but still, you know, that might be about all I got for you. Besides that, like Kaminga, just constant aggressiveness, screening, transition. Please involve him in the offense. Don't just stick him in the corner doing nothing. I'm feeling optimistic about Kaminga. Uh, that's all I got for you there. Oh, also, Steph is amazing. You already knew that.